To introduce the basic idea of this lesson, I'd like you to try and do an exercise with a friend. I want you to each choose a role. One of you should be the supplier and one of the customer. Decide on how much is owed at the beginning of the month. Um, hopefully you can agree on this. It shouldn't be too difficult. And then I want you together to create 10 transactions that might take place between the two of you. On your own, record each of these transactions from your point of view. So keep in mind that yeah, they will actually be from opposite perspectives because one of you is the supplier or the creditor and the other one is the customer or the debtor. Once you've done your 10 transactions, you can compare your records to determine the differences. If you haven't yet done this, pause this video and go ahead with your friend and do this activity. Once you've come back together and compared your records, do you notice that it's very possible that you might have transactions that you've treated differently? Maybe because you interpreted the transaction in a different way, maybe because you made a mistake. And unlike with a bank reconciliation, the chance of error could lie with either of you. So when we get a statement from a creditor, which generally should happen at the end of every month, it's very important that we do do a reconciliation. We're going to do it in exactly the same way as we did with the bank recon, um, where we compare our entries with those on the creditor's statement. Um, but keep in mind that the error could actually lie with either of you. Over here, you can see that I've laid it out in exactly the same way as we did our bank reconciliation, um, which was also exactly the same way as the Smarties activity. Keep that Smarties activity in the back of your mind. It's going to work and help you in exactly the same way. Firstly, what you'll do is you'll check that transactions are the same. And you can see there's an invoice that has been recorded correctly on both sides. However, over here, there's a transaction that perhaps hasn't yet appeared in the creditor's ledger. So you would need to update your records with information that you don't need, yet know about. At the same time, you might have had a payment that your creditor hasn't yet seen. So you would show that on your remittance advice um, or a creditor's reconciliation statement. It's exactly the same thing. Um, remittance advice simply means that this is what you are telling the creditor that they need to fix. You might do it via an email, you might do it on a formal piece of paper that um, goes back with your payment um, as you send your proof of payment from the EFT, or it might be that you just pick up the phone and talk to them. But as you are trying to reconcile, you will need to make a note on some kind of remittance advice or reconciliation. And it would show over here in exactly the same way as we did a bank reconciliation. Hopefully, at the end of this process, the new balance that you've worked out <coughs> that your creditor should have should be exactly the same as the balance that you should have. Your remittance advice could be the communication that you've sent to the creditor detailing anything that they've left out or any errors that they've made and explaining the amount that you are actually paying because otherwise they might be a bit confused as to why the amount you're paying is not the same as what was on the statement. It's unnecessary to do a debtor's reconciliation for the simple reason that debtors aren't going to send you statements. It's very unlikely that the debtor is going to send you a statement. Um, what is more likely is that, is that you would send them a statement and then they should compare and check in their own records and contact you if there's a problem. Let's have a look at this example. The account of Henry's suppliers has a balance of 3700 in the books of Georgia of Traders, but the statement from Henry's suppliers indicates an amount of 5300 owed. Well, obviously that means that in your creditor's ledger, you've got a balance of 3700 but they think that you owe them 5300 So that's how we're going to set up our initial um, bank recon. Georgia of Traders rece recorded an invoice for stock for 6500 as 5600 What's happened in this case is that you're going to need to actually do a general journal entry um, to adjust it. That will be the easiest way of fixing it. Um, and you will simply show the difference of 900 that you will increase the amount in the trading stock account and increase the amount that you owe to Georgia of Traders. Alternatively, you could also do an additional invoice um, in your uh, creditor's journal, except that if the original invoice was correct, then you would need to fix it in the general journal. The general journal is a very common way of correcting errors.
Henry Supplies recorded the return of goods worth 350 as a purchase by Georgia of Traders. Credit note 439 had been received from Henry Traders, which means that we know that Henry Traders is very happy to give us that allowance. However, they've simply calculated it and entered it incorrectly. So what we need to do is we need to let them know that they've made a mistake. Now, because they've treated it in the opposite way of what they should have, that's why we're going to double the amount. So this 700 is in fact 350 Rand that is firstly subtracted to correct the error and then subtracted again to enter the transaction as it should be. At the end of the day, you can check your um, creditor's ledger balance and the amount in your um, remittance advice and they should obviously be exactly the same.